Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Eitor from AWS Solutions Architect. Joined with me, I have Chris from TravelX. Hi. Hi, Chris. So tell us, what does TravelX do? TravelX is a world-leading foreign exchange expert, and um, my team was mm -hmm. asked to build a B2C payments platform from scratch, wow. and we chose to use Amazon to do that. Okay, great news. So no legacy, and I obviously security is on top of everything. Absolutely, absolutely. So we are FCA regulated. We didn't um, wrap a third party. We decided mm -hmm. to build key parts of the infrastructure ourselves. Wow. And so we have a high security bar and a high audit bar to mm -hmm. So that's all the architecture is supposed to be about the online banking that you're building, right? Absolutely. absolutely. Perfect. So what is this architecture that you, we, we have in today? Okay, so... Starting with the user on the left, we're mm -hmm. going to just talk through the different components that a typical request through into our infrastructure will touch, mm -hmm. bearing in mind that all of the buzzwords for a 2016-2017 architecture will be present. So single page application, microservices with Docker. All this and a happy user. And a happy user, absolutely. Okay. Our focus is on this guy. So they make a request into CloudFront. We mm -hmm. use Amazon's WAF to secure that, but only at a very high level, very granular controls, the old IP whitelisting, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the vast majority of our site is a single page application, which is great for me because there's no work right. to do to maintain it. Um, then for API calls into our backend, we make calls into here. And um, obviously there is an ELB in the middle ah, because okay. this is a, an ECS container architecture. So mm -hmm. really each of these boxes is a set of containers boxes. distributed across hosts wrapped mm -hmm. with an ELB. Um, and these ELBs run in layer four. So we do end to end encryption across our whole infrastructure. Okay. Um, so from the gateway, this is really where the WAF kicks in. So we run Nginx Plus, essentially, as um, an API gateway. We have a commercial inline WAF mm -hmm. running there with um, several thousand controls. Um, and this is also where we do the majority of our rate limiting and things like that, because mm -hmm. you have a very fine degree of control. Okay. Um, from here, is, as an API gateway pattern, we then forward requests to individual um, backend microservices, microservices, and microservices might talk amongst themselves as well. So these are, again, ELBs. ELB everywhere as well. Layer okay. 4, and the same here, Layer 4 ELB. And all these are using HTTPS, TLS, etc. Absolutely. Okay. So if we were to talk about um, the... TLS set up between these different components. Um, the first thing is that everything to the right of this line essentially is um, in the private side of our mm -hmm. infrastructure. And in terms of TLS, we run the TLS 1.2 strongest cipher suite, a single cipher suite between here and here and here mm -hmm. and here and so on. Okay. Um, and then here we do mutual auth with TLS as well. So there is a client certificate here and a server certificate for this. And similarly, this microservice has a client certificate, and this microservice will have a server one. Okay. And I presume these certificates are generated by this guy? Yeah, there? that's why we have HashiCorp okay. Vault in the picture. So HashiCorp Vault is designed for short-term leasing of secrets, mm -hmm. and we use it for all of our PKI, as well as um, IAM access credentials for Amazon resources, um, Postgres credentials for the database side of things, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And the key thing about this is that we are issuing certificates with a three-day lease. Oh, that's pretty short. So that's yeah. mostly from the security perspective. Uh, if the certificate is invalid, then you can, they won't be able to talk to each other. Absolutely. So okay. in order to tolerate a three-day lease, we re rotate our secrets daily. So oh, wow. every day, um, we roll the containers over, we redeploy mm -hmm. them with new secrets, new um, certificates, and so on and so forth. And that means that the blast radius associated with losing a particular one. secret mm -hmm. is very, very short and very, very small. Okay. And obviously, Vault logs everything into an audit so that we know who's accessing the secrets in here. Um, and similarly, we have joined up logging across all of our microservices. Well, so I also presume that on the Docker host itself, that it runs these Docker containers, you also do benchmarks like CIS and then many other things, Absolutely. scanning the Docker image that you run through to make sure there's no yep. vulnerability. Absolutely. Perfect. Is that is that anything else that you potentially yeah, do? I think, I think the, the main thing to highlight in our container security, which might be a little bit unusual, mm -hmm. is that we have hand-rolled um, SE Linux policies for each individual oh. container. Okay. So ECS gives us a lot of features in terms of how you schedule things, but specifically we can mandate um, a custom policy for the gateway, which enables it to forward requests to backend, but not mm -hmm. for new processes. And likewise with our microservices, they are allowed to listen on given ports, but not fork, not make calls out by this kind of thing. Literally Mac controls. Wow, that's Absolutely. pretty good. 
apart from all of this, anything else that you would like to see? Or like, what's next in the architecture? So what's next in our architecture? We want to spend more time with Lambda at Edge in CloudFront so that oh, we can cool. issue custom um, headers to improve our security posture here. Okay. I think it's very important that for things like PKI, you do rotate your secrets regularly. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens, incidentally, for our database credentials, Amazon credentials, secrets all of the rest. Absolutely. So they're designed to be leased on a very short period, mm -hmm. rotated very regularly, and we can then use that to minimize the blast radius associated with the loss of a particular secret in our infrastructure. Perfect. Well, Chris, uh, thanks very much. That's very fascinating, especially all these TLS bits and pieces and the certificate. It's very unique uh, compared to what I've seen so far. Um, and thanks everyone for watching. This is my architecture.